Now, autonomous warfare in Operation Sindur. This is the most important article for, according to me for this day. So, when you are <clears throat> talking about autonomous weapons, what is the first thing that you need to know? Can you tell me? We already discussed. What do you mean by an autonomous weapon system? What is an autonomous weapon system? Something that operates on its own. Now, in any warfare, if you have to divide the operation segments, first is detection, then making a decision whether we should strike or defend, and then actually taking that attack. At these three levels, autonomous weapons are very important because they automate all the three stages. Firstly, you need to understand the technology behind it. Then you have to understand India's, the names of the missiles, the tracking mechanisms, air defense systems, everything that forms a part of the autonomous systems. So at mains level, these names are important. Sorry, um, in prelims level, in mains level, they can be used as substantiation. But ethics, you can talk about the ethics of autonomous warfare. I'll just give you one example the other day, what happened. There is something called the Geneva Convention. Okay, the Geneva Convention on war crimes. In the ongoing <coughs> Russia-Ukraine war, at one spot, a Russian soldier was injured and he just sat down on the ground. There is a drone called Kamikaze drone. It's called the suicide drone. Suicide drone or the Japanese influenced Kamikaze drone. Okay. This drone actually went in a close-up shot at a point blank level. It traveled all the way from the sky to the uh, ground and shot him. It actually blew up. These are Kamikaze drones are drones that are like suicide bombers. They just blow up when they see the target. When a soldier is injured and lying on the ground without attacking, an autonomous weapon decided to blow up the target, which is a clear violation of the Geneva Convention of War Crimes. This raises an ethical debate, whether we should encourage autonomous weapons that do not discriminate between the soldier who is injured and the soldier who is just attacking them. The purpose of warfare is not to attack, it's to defend. That should be the default mode across the world. Correct. One of them might be an aggressor. But the default mode or the thought process across the world that we need to encourage is to think of defense. The name itself is defense, not attack. We need defense systems, not attack systems. So, as a part of the defense strategy, attack can be a tool, but it cannot be a norm. It is in this context you need to know the weapons that are involved in the Indian defense system. Where are we, um, <coughs> you know, uh, importing it from? How many of them are indigenously developed by DRDO? And the overall theme of Atmanir Bartha in defense, defense manufacturing. These are the issues that are surrounding this article. We have already discussed what is the national um, <coughs> security doctrine that we should have. What is the importance of weapons, loitering munitions, Hiron. All of this are already discussed in the previous classes. So I am not elaborating. This article is not new, but it is like a summary of all the important themes at one place. So that is the reason it is important for you to read this article. Okay. What is it that you have to understand? India's multi-layer defense system. You have the India's integrated air command and control systems. Where is this? Yeah. Here, you have to know about Akash Tir, which is an indigenous system, along with the S-400, which is a Russian imported air defense system. Three components. Detection, for which you will use radars. Then taking a decision. Then finally, attack or defend. At these three levels, the corresponding technologies and the actual names of the missiles or the equipment used by our country, they will form the part of our prelims questions. For example, in 2025 prelims paper, you would notice that there is a, a question on Dornier uh, C-17 Globemaster. See, anytime, I'm just giving you, now that I remember that uh, question, if something, India has C-235, okay? And C-17 Globemaster is U.S.'s military aircraft equipment transporter, a huge aircraft, wherein you can store 
a lot of equipment in that and it can transport military equipment okay so the word sea here indicates cargo okay nomenclature can help you understand solve prelims questions so please focus on that nomenclature okay these are the things that you need to focus on uh, other names the new kind of war this is the most important thing there is a paradigm shift that this um, autonomous weapons bring in a paradigm shift one from actually facing the enemy directly on a battlefront to a coordinated humanless effort as a strategic restraint to defend our territory this is the new kind of warfare and even in the kind of warfare india can send a global message through operation sindur like operations one on the level of our technological prowess in ensuring and neutralizing any uh, attack on our country and two despite having power we decide not to use it we exercised a strategic restraint we are not an aggressor that messaging with almost negligible human risk for indian armed forces is what autonomous weapons can give to this country that's the kind of conclusion we need to focus on okay so that's about it for today please read these articles pick up the points this article is extremely important i'll also be posting it on my telegram channel after some time you can note down the highlighted keywords okay see you tomorrow